And welcome back to the Greg Horenda Show, where today we are honored and privileged to have FDU royalty and yeah. New York Met royalty. We have the Vice President of Alumni Relations, and that title is absolutely doesn't do the justice to this legend. We have Mr. Jay Horwitz on the Greg Horenda Show. Jay, welcome back to... FDU, my man. My pleasure, Bass. Had eight great years with uh, with Fairly Dickinson. Um, what, a lot of good memories. A lot of good memories. I'll tell you, Jay. I do my research here, and everywhere I turned, I could not get anybody but to say the greatest things about you. I'm going back to Jay Jorgensen, Seth Greenberg, Gary Cohen, um, just people that. Adore you. Well, you really is. Well, just you're all good friends. Yeah. yeah. I, I had a lot of good times at Fairley. I really did. It was good times. Jay, I'm the head basketball coach here at Fairley Dickinson now. And I'd really like to, for you, because I never met the man. I saw him coach, but I know that you guys were close when you were here in the 80s. Uh, Mr. Al Balbo, the late, yeah. great Al was- Balbo. Can you please give me your connection to him and give our viewers and listeners uh, a look into Coach LaBalbo and your relationship with him. It did, it did start off great, Greg, to be honest with you. December 1st, 1972, my first day on a job, we're playing at the University of Maine in Orono, band box gym. Oh, yeah. I come out in the official score. I write down the wrong name, the names down in the scorebook wrong. We start the game, two technical fouls, lost the game 68-67 in overtime. Oh. Uh, comes by the scoring table and says to me, now I know why F and NYU dropped basketball. You're a moron. And now, but it did get better after that. He became like my second father. And, you know, we, Al, Al was a great man. We didn't have the, we had, we didn't, we played in Rutherford gym in those days. And Al's philosophy was play away and get the big team to come back. We have a center, hence Rothman Center. We lost, I think, in 37 different states. In the eight years I was there, we played the University of Georgia, U- Utah, uh, Georgia Southern, Virginia Tech. We traveled all over the country. And Al, he right. was a great man. He got a lot out of this team, but we just didn't have the firepower to complete with the, with the Georgias. But he, I learned a lot from him. He and his wife, Ruth, uh, became like my second family. But he, he practiced hard and got a lot out of the guys. And I'll never forget the, the good times in Rutherford Gym. I'll tell you one thing. To, to get those technicals and to still have a relationship like you had with them. Yes. You must, you must be a good guy. Yeah. We played, uh, can I tell you one Seth Greenberg story? We're oh, playing I need University. it, yeah. I'll, I'll make sure it's, we're playing the University of uh, Texas in, in Austin. So we had um, uh, Seth Greenberg and uh, we had a Levine starting it forward. So, so I told the, the loudspeaker guy that I put a bob in all the names. Starting a guard for the Mets, uh, Seth Bob Greenberg. Starting the other forward, Seth Tom Levine. And after the third Bob, the guy cursed me. I said, what are you doing? This can't be right. So I had some fun. You know, we didn't, we didn't win a whole lot of those games. But we had fun traveling. I, I, you know, th- those were the days when, and I wish I had seen them play in, in, in Rutherford because now it's Felician University. So you actually started at Rutherford. Did you ever right. did you get to did you ever get to the Rothman Center or no? You were you were well before the no. Rothman. I did. I left. I left the Mets in. Uh, I left the Mets in in the March of 1980. And I think when was Rothman built? You know what? I don't. Yeah, it was after. It was yeah. right, after, right after that. We had to go back and forth. Uh, when we, when we used to play at, at Roth, we had to go back and forth, Teaneck and Rutherford. And right. one night I'll never forget, it's a horrible night. It was a snowstorm and uh, one of the guys got killed. Ben Johnson was killed in a That's car right. crash. That's right. And uh, George Lighty and Redonia Duck. Uh, you know, we, we, Redonia Duck is my really own claim to fame. I got him on the All-American name team, Redonia Duck Jr., starting power forward. Wow. And he was on a pr- cover of the press guide one year. It was a, a duck pod right in front of the Teaneck Center. So about oh. two hours, I sat there throwing breadcrumbs at the ducks to come near red. Now I was the cover of the press guy one year. With wow. Donnie Duck Jr., All-American name team. 
Jay, the Rothman Center was built in 1987. So that yeah. was well before you were already with the Mets. For, yeah, for that was Al's dream to play these tough teams. And yeah. when we got to set it to get some return games, you know, and uh, Al was a great man. He a lot of good, good deep boy, you man. You know, I remember one night he was good friends with Bobby Knight. Oh, Bobby came right. down once and, uh, yes. you know, those are good times. And I, I used to, I followed Al when he went over to St. John's when he was coaching yep. with Louie over there. I used to go to a lot of the games over there. Sure. And now, ba like, you did not only, you know, basketball, you were a proponent of baseball and soccer. Tell me about Steve Dembowski. How many times – now we know why he is the way he is. How many times was he hit with a baseball jam? Only 128 times, Greg, 128. But the best thing about <laughs> Steve was one spring, he, I had cameras out to film 11 times the cameras out. He got it every time. He never <laughs> let me down. He got signed to a contract with, uh, with the Yankees. Jim Bowden helped promote him a little bit, and uh, he got signed with the Yankees. Steve is still a good friend, and uh, – Yes. He's got a big part of my book. He tells some Jay Harwood stories in the book. But I have a whole chapter on FDU in the book, uh, Greg, uh, too. Oh, that's awesome. I know all our fans and our listeners will listen. Tell me about your transition to the Mets. How, what was that connection? How, how did it happen? And did uh, Coach LeBalbo, did he give you any wisdom on, you know, should you go or should well, you stay? the funny thing, he was going to get he – was, he wasn't coming back for the uh, – when I started, when he – my late with, – with 79, he knew he wasn't coming back in 80, you know. And that yeah. was one of the reasons. Where I actually had a job offer from NBC News, from NBC to be the stat guy for Tony Kubek and Joe Garagiola. And a oh, couple yeah. of days later, I got a call to go over to, you know, the Mets, which I took the job. But I knew Al wasn't coming back there. And listen, I, 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 I love my time at Freely, but I had a chance to get to the pros. And then because Al wasn't yes. going to be there, I thought it was a good opportunity for me to kind of make the break. When you made it, did they – how did you get the job, Jay? Did they – was it open or did somebody call you? Or what you was know how to help me get me the job? You, you two probably – you know, you know, remember. Franklin Jacobs. In the oh, late, yeah. Franklin Jacobs played – he was high a jumper. Jacobs, East, East, High, East Side High School. He set yep. the world record. He jumped two feet over his head, won the Milrose Games. We yes. had a lot of, like, say, kind of different athletes when I was there. A uh, priest who played hockey, a, a 43-year-old freshman football player, <laughs> had, an, had an Arab and Israeli goalie on the soccer team, and it kind of got some attention. And the Mets at that time weren't a very good team. They wanted an oddball kind of PR guy to, to, to help get PR. And I was an oddball PR guy. And because of Franklin, I got attention, and the Mets called me for an interview. There's no doubt in my mind. I got the job at the Mets because of Franklin Jacobs. Wow. That's a, that's a great story. Now, when you start with the Mets, tell me about that, man. The first time you walked on the Shea Stadium, uh, you know, met with the players, was that like an unbelievable experience? Tell me about your first, your first dealings with the New York Mets. As I, I actually, I, got, I started April 1st, 1980. I actually got lost on my way to Shea Stadium. I was daydreaming. I wound up in Brooklyn and missed a turn. But the guy who made it easy for me, my first manager was Joe Torrey. Joe introduced me to everybody. He came around. You know, I was a young kid from, from FDU. He introduced me to Pete Rose, to George Brett, to all the big guy. Hey, says our new PR yeah. guy. Be nice to him. And he helped me make the transition. I was a little bit in awe, but I just tried to be myself and, you know, not to be too uh, crazy and slowly I, I got you know the guys you know guys like Doug Flynn in the beginning and Craig yep. Swan they took me under their wing and it was a great transition I was really they made it very easily I'm really happy at 40 years I've had a lot of great relationships Greg, through the years. Jay I have to tell you and you can't make this up I've been a Met fan my brother my mother my best friend in baseball Tommy Parker I mean we lived through it all and I've never this is the first time we've really spoken we've never met but I just right. when I hear your name I just remember the Mets winning big games and then you were just the orchestrator of everything I think one game you had a rainbow yeah. on I can vividly see you it might have been a Dodger playoff game and you were grabbing guys and pulling and all the players uh, just gravitated to you and did things for you well. and 
now if I found out you did everything for these guys. Tell me about your relationship. Well, my whole philosophy life. going forward, I, I try to treat the 25th guy on the team like the number one guy. I didn't, yeah. you know, if, if you know, if the guys ask for favors for their wives or getting tickets or answered questions, I didn't try and just cater up to the stars, to the strawberries, the good ones, the, 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 the Carters. I took care of everybody, and I think that helped get me through the 40 years because I was, you know, I, I treated everybody the same, and I didn't show any favorites. Right. I think that's one thing. Now when I call guys in my new job as the alumni director, they'll pick up the phone because they know I, I, I cared about them as people. I think that's important. Care about them as people and yes. treat everybody the same. That was that my philosophy got me through. And that's never really changed, and it really started at Fairleigh Dickinson because I, when I talked to Seth and I talked to – to uh, Jay Jorgensen, these guys are like, yo, man, Jay is as solid as a rock. So you, it always came up to back to me that you delivered on whatever you yeah, said. I try, you know, Steve, Steve McQuinsky, uh, Glenn Bolduck, uh, um, ah, or, or, yep. or that was, you know, uh, Howard Wilson. I remember, I still remember the names. Uh, yeah, and yeah. Uh, and I, I keep, you know, Jay actually called me a project they're working on to help promote. Um, is this something to do with cancer research? He's writing teammates, a book. For teammates for life that I'm involved yeah. with, with. And I actually yeah. contributed something to the book, and you know, okay. and, uh, but 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 yeah, Jay's and all. I mean, Danny McLaughlin. You know what to say? I think I bring up Rich Conrad was a good friend of mine, really good oh. friend of mine from Clifton, and you know, Massive. actually, when one of my uh, co-workers was sick with uh, cancer at uh, at the Hackensack Hospital, I made it to what times? So what are you doing here, Rich? I have cancer and. You know, shortly after he passed, and and what yeah, a great yeah, player! Yeah. Used to, Connie used to call him, and he was a one of the great ones. Yeah, good player, good guy. Died, died way too young, way too young. Oh God! And Geraldine is still a big Geraldine. Still comes to our game. His lovely good. wife. And I don't know if you know his son Bobby graduated um, two years ago. I was the commencement. Jay, how about that? I was the commencement speaker at MetLife Stadium for the for Bobby's. Really? Yeah, but the, but those were good good times, and I really, if I didn't get a call, I had no problem staying at Fairley. I loved the, the kids. There used to right. be equipment manager there, Eddie Andrushak. We used to have lunch every day. Uh, get heroes on in Teaneck Road, and the trainers Doug Boyne and John Levin. Pat, do you remember his name? Patty Cream may mean anything to you. Patty was a trainer for the women's team, and now she's a ticket manager with the Twins in the minor leagues. I keep, okay. keep, keep and I keep in touch with Big Jagano. Maybe the old basket yeah. women's bit, you know, the uh, women's coach. So I still try I, to keep my fairly ties alive. I do know uh, John Levitt, Bunny. He was the trainer at Seton Hall after well, I was an assistant at Seton Hall. One of the – John Levitt, one of the fit, funniest human beings alive, Jay. No? Yeah, he had a little beard, looked like a chipmunk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jay, we got to talk about the Mets now. Like – you got to understand, and you've, you've heard a lot of these same stories from other fans. When we were young boys, we'd go out in the backyard and imitate Bob Murphy and, and did the starting lineups with Lindsey Nelson. And I pretended like – I loved Felix Mian, how he choked up on the bat. Right, brother, right, right. His brother uh, was Duffy Dyer. Right. Um, tell me about – some of the, like you said, you, you treat the 25th guy like the number one guy. Tell me about just some of the characters uh, that kind of made the Mets who they were back when you were uh, working for the organization. When I, when I started in the age, we had a guy named Dyer Miller, probably not heard of him. He's a relief pitcher. Dyer's claim to fame is he, we used to have cow milking contests in those days. He was 4-0 and as a cow milker in Chicago and St. Louis. I had a guy... Doug Flynn used to sing with the Oak Ridge Boys uh, yes. and Loretta Lynn Band. And, and I still keep in contact with Doug. And, you know, guys like, uh, you know, Daryl Boston, we had a kangaroo court back in the days. Daryl's a coach with the White Sox now. He, right. he put the robe on and, and had the fines. And let me see who else are the offbeat guys. Uh, you, know, uh, you, know, you know, Sid Fernandez. Sid was always trying to lose weight. And he was always better. Yeah. He was a little bit heavier, so he he stopped trying to lose weight. But uh, That's right. but they were. I mean, you know, I, I you know, and Terry Collins is a you know is a a good friend, and the managers have been great from Joe on to really kind of shocking to me to Willie Randolph who lives in New Jersey. 
still hasn't gotten a job yet after yeah. managing the men. He should, he should have a job. But, I mean, it's yeah, hopefully get back to playing baseball this year. And, you know, and main thing is everybody's got to be safe. You can't do it with people in jeopardy, the fans or anybody. So, hopefully that gets Amen. stuff in order, you know, like that. You're right. Jay, was Kiner's corner still going while when you were there? Yes, and I, I strange it may seem when and it, when and when when Dwight came up, I remember it like it was yesterday after he got a win at Chase Stadium. I said you can go on Kiner's corner, and you know what, uh, Doc, you get a hundred dollars for going on. And, oh, really? A hundred dollars? I'll do anything for a hundred dollars. What do you think we're now? If you offered a player in any sport a hundred dollars to do something, I don't think it would make it. And it, yeah. Ralph. Ralph had a way he would sit sit down and talk to the guys and uh, the, yeah. the, the day when when uh, Gary Carter in 1985 hit a home run to win opening day in his first game, he introduced right. uh, Gary's Gary Cooper. So uh, Gary Ralph had a way of kind of sometimes twisting the names a little bit, you know. Yeah. But he was a lovable, great man, and the guy had a he you know ten years in a row he hit over 30, 40 home runs. If he, if he didn't have a back injury, God knows how many home runs he would hit. But you know, he and Bob Murphy and Gary Thorne and McCarver and Gary and Howie Rose, really great, great people to work with, great people. I mean, uh, you can do it just a show on that booth when it was Murphy, uh, Ralph Kiner, and Lindsey Nelson. Just Lindsay, you... I never worked with Lindsey. I, Lindsey left the year I went. But, okay. you know, today, you know, I think we have the best booth in, in baseball with, wow. uh, with Gary, Ron, and Keith, you know. And, uh, no question. You know, such, good, such good rapport together. You know, like Gary's the quarterback, Ronnie takes care of the pitching, Keith takes care of the hitting, and they go back and forth. They can laugh at each other. You know, it's great that, you know, Ronnie and, and, and Keith were teammates for so long. They have great simpatico together, you know. They, were, they still are, and they're, they're a, a big reason why I still watch the game is slow. I'm a basketball yeah. coach. I love baseball, but I'll watch the Mets just to listen to these three guys, especially. Yeah, they're very knowledgeable. <laughs> and they, they're really knowledgeable, and they, they you know, they, they give you insights you probably don't get in other in broadcasts. Yeah. Jay, Strawberry Fields Forever, was that you? No, I can't take credit for that. The only thing which I did do, when Daryl played his first game in Kingsport in 1980, I worked something out. He played in Elizabethtown, Tennessee. We worked out a deal that every fan getting into the game uh, with a strawberry would get in for free. So we, that was a, my first promotion I was involved with in 1980. Every fan that went to Elizabeth, Tennessee with a strawberry went again for free. I love it. How about now Franco putting ice cream? Is that a true story? Franco Everything, putting ice cream? Every, I could have written a whole book on the jokes that Johnny Franco uh, pulled on me. Um, I mean, he used to put white out on my glasses, cut my ties, put rats in my work bag. Uh, um, one, one spring he he and Brett said, hey, brother, you tied me up on a stretcher, put me on a mound in St. Lucie, put nuts on my chest, and, this, and, this, and the ducks would come down and eat the nuts off my chest. But you know what, though, Greg? I was always able to laugh at myself. And you know, like Johnny yeah. said to me, he said, we're not going to keep doing it unless we like it. So I was always, you know, right. it's just how you do to get, to get along in the locker room with some of the stuff you have to do. It was fine. I just took it as good fun. I love it. Jay, give our viewers a shot of the book, and, and you, maybe you can just talk a little bit exact. I don't have the book yet. Jay Jorgensen showed it to you know, me. I, Mr. Yeah, Man. if you want to text, text, me, or text, text me your address, I can get you one, Greg. Oh, I appreciate that, man. I Is love that. Can you see it? Me, I, can see, I can see you, Mr. Matt, uh, your yeah. face. Pick, just tell me it about – It was 30 years ago. That's why – I was I was ten when his picture was oh, taken. You look good now. You look good. Very well, he's ten years house. old. <laughs> Tell what, me about how long did it take you to write that book? Probably a, about a, a year plus, you know. And I really wasn't going to write a book, but I, like I said, I've always been able to laugh at myself. And I'm nearing the end of my career. So listen, let me put down some stories and yeah. and make people laugh and. You know, it was, I'm never was going to do a tell-all book. It was going to be a feel-good book. And one of the reasons why I wrote the book, uh, Greg, there was a, uh, a woman who worked for me for 22 years from Little Ferry, Shannon Ford. She died of breast cancer a couple of years oh. ago. And I, I just wanted people to remember her legacy. You know, she, she left two young kids. And, you know, when she, when she uh, uh, died in, in, in 16, nine major league teams uh, held a moment of silence for her. 
I just wow. feel it's important, you know, to make to keep her legacy alive and 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 you know, I just want to awesome. pay homage to the people who who helped me through the career and have some fun with it. So that's that's what I did. Jay, time is running out. I've been asked that I have to ask you this question. Did Mike and the Mad Dog have anything to do with the Piazza trade? You would know more than anybody. I I think that they brought it up on the air, but honestly, the deal came to us and, and we knew we had to do something to change the confirmation of the ball club. They campaigned for it, but our ownership knew the opportunity was there. I mean, so I know Mike is a good friend. He wants to take credit for it, but we were aware that something drastically had to get done to change our thing in the city. And it did because the next two years we're in the playoffs and that's exactly what happened. You know, and Mike is a Hall of Famer. We're in a Met uniform. Tremendous player, uh, a tremendous career. Your career goes on as the vice president of alumni relations. Right. So were you in charge of like, Old Timers Day and what, 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 what? Yeah, what we do, we, we, we didn't have an Old Timers Day. We do, we bring guys in for weekends. You know, yeah. like every home weekend last year, we brought in two guys, like Doug Flynn, Joe Youngblood, uh, Benny Agbayani, Bobby Jones, um, that kind of yep. stuff. We, and we, they, they did autograph sessions, uh, you know, did media, social media stuff. We just found we, yeah. that we got more bang for our buck to spread it out the whole year. Like we had like 14 weekends we report guys in and hopefully we ever get back to normal. We can see, do that again. Hey Jay, I've got to let you go, but I was told by many people that you were a, a great man and you proved it today. You are well, man. You're my pleasure. Great. Again, I always remember with fondness, my ties were fairly but I'm going to have a great season this year, Greg. I appreciate it. I want to have you over as our guest from Clifton uh, to Teaneck or to Hackensack and have you as a guest. At one of our I love games. to. Love I love to. All right. Take care. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. You're the All best. Right. Let's All right. Go, take care. Have a good, be, be safe, everybody. Okay. You got Thanks. it, brother.